speak on behalf of the Great Awakening, and we are a Masonic Hebrew ministry, where our vision is to awaken Yah's chosen people to their true identity, to give insight to the heart of Yah's purpose, and to make ready for Yahuwah a people prepared. So the beauty of this vision is to really talk about the concepts of the Bible. You know, we live, like I said before, we live in a Americanized version of the gospel that comes with its own perspectives. So what does it mean to make ready for a people, uh, to make ready for Yahuwah, a people prepared? What are we preparing for? And um, that's the heart of this ministry, that's the heart of this message, is what are we preparing for? So when we start to understand the Bible, uh, the context of the Bible, uh, what it means, what it represents, uh, we get some the, the fullness of the word. So we're going to get into a little bit of some kingdom concepts. I call this Understanding the Kingdom, Volume 2. So we're just going to talk on some things about what are we preparing for, what is it that we're entering into? Because like I said before, you cannot experience something that you don't know anything about. So that's why wisdom is the principal thing. But out of all our getting, we should get understanding. So that's what I am. I am a teacher. I am a teacher. It's important that we have teaching because we can have uh, words that make us feel good. We can go to places and they can speak to us. And it make us feel good about a situation, but we need teaching so we can apply certain things so that can transfer into our daily walk, our daily lives, and that we can get a joy that is unspeakable and is full of glory. It's a joy that, that can't be taken away. It's a joy that and it's a it's a faith and it's a hope that can't be shaken because you're you're founded upon a, a solid foundation and a good understanding of the word. And that's what faith is about, having a sturdy foundation. And a good understanding of the word. That's why the Bible also talks about if the foundation be destroyed, then what shall not what shall the world do? What shall people do? But says, what shall the righteous do? Because if the righteous, if us being righteous, if we don't have the right understanding, the right perspectives, we're not going to know what to do. We're not going to be able to stand upon what we need to stand upon. All right. So I'm just going to get into some of these slides. Like I said, this is understanding. The Kingdom Volume 2, Understanding Kingdom Concepts. Like I said, I'm just going to go through a, a brief recap of what we went through, uh, I think it was two weeks ago. So, all right, let's hop into it. So, Understanding Kingdom Volume 2, Understanding Kingdom Concepts. First of all, what is a kingdom? We talked about this uh, last, last uh, broadcast. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is a governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, and his intent, and is to produce a people, a citizenry of people, who express his culture and reflect his nature. So that's what a kingdom is all about. That's what's the desire that the Most High wanted. He wanted a, a he wanted to conquer and rule this earth through a people. And by giving them certain concepts of heavenly things, they are to dominate, to rule the earth, and they do it through an influence of culture. All right. We talked a little bit about the difference between religion and the reality of kingdom living, the reality of, of the expression of what the Most High wanted. See, religion just calls you to go through life. You go to a, a place, one place maybe two, three times a week, and you may spend an hour or two there, and then once you come out of that place, you do your thing, you come out, and nothing that you did inside is impactful to able to carry to do what you need to do outside. And that's what religion has done. That's what we have been kind of uh, uh, put into, is that we do a form of, of things but it's not impacting even some of the information that we get. We can't use it in our daily lives to the perspective of what the Most High wanted to manifest the kingdom, to manifest a government on this earth and its practical things 
just like if you went to the White House, if you go to your 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 uh city council meeting and everything, and all they did was just sit there and talk about certain things, but you never seen the effects once you leave that meeting, you see that it's ineffective. There's no lives being changed. There's no laws being put in place. People's lives are not uh being better. Things are not being carried out. And that's why we have to understand the practicality of this word and how to apply this word throughout our lives and how to how to manifest certain aspects. And it's some real life practical things. OK, it's just because, you know, like I said before, we come from an Americanized perspective, which comes from a Greco Roman perspective. And that is an abstract westernized way of thinking which the bible and we as a people even even us as a people we as a people group as so-called african americans we as a people group even we trace out our our heritage our culture our lineage from africa and even up to israel we have a concrete eastern way of thinking it's concrete and what i mean by it being concrete is that ancient hebrew thought they they thought of things the way it was they 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 what they could talk about they could see it and even their language was pictures that they could see to get the right concepts and get to right the right understanding so everybody at that time had the same concept when you said a word or when you said a phrase everyone so that they were able to become one they didn't have one person didn't have this terminology then this other person had this different meaning how we do now in our abstract westernized thinking because that's what happened that's kind of the the uh that's kind of the downside of what, the the perspective that we have through a greco roman westernized mentality is that we 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 like to uh be philosophical and try to think abstract and, and think deeper than where things are really are and to and not understand the things that how they are in just plain context so we got to get an understanding of that all right so we're going to get into some more of these scriptures so let's see so a kingdom concept like i said before the concept that a person has determines how they see life the bible has different concepts than what we have been preaching and teaching okay so like I said before, because of how, where we grown up, where we come from, and because we far removed from the culture of ancient Israel, from the culture of the Bible, from the culture of, 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 of where the Bible is written, we, we have the wrong concepts, which gives us the wrong interpretations, the wrong meanings, meanings. And that's why we have so many different denominations, different schools of thoughts uh different things and that's why you can ask 10 people the same question and you'll get 10 different answers because we 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 like to uh be philosophical we like to see what things mean to us when the when the word says that this word is of no private interpretation okay there's things that are absolute and there's concrete and we all should be saying one thing doing the same thing and becoming one so let's get into it uh, i read this is from hebrews 5 11 and 14 this is one of my favorite verses um give me one second let me see if y'all can hear me hopefully it's going okay give me one second i'll double check One second, one second. Trying to navigate through Facebook. Okay, okay. He's saying I'm good. That's good. All right. So Kingdom Concepts, Hebrew 5 and 11. It says this, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that ye are dull of hearing. So let me, let me break this down. Hebrews, they say Paul, Hebrew name Shaul 
chapter, he wrote Hebrews. And in this fifth chapter, he began to talk about some of the things concerning the Messiah, concerning Yahushua. And he began to want to express some things to them. But he had to stop and he said, I have many things that I want to say to you, but they're hard to be uttered because you're dull of hearing. And then he goes into talking about why they are dull of hearing. He says, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of Elua, or Elohim. All right. So what he's saying is that you don't really understand the principles or the oracles. What are principles? Principles are the primary or foundational things. He's saying, I want to tell you about the deep things about how Yahushua died and how he became the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And I want to tell you about all the things that what it represents and how it means. But you won't really understand those things because you don't really understand the principles, the primary things, the foundational things, the oracles of Elul. He says, now become such of need of milk and not of strong meat. He says, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful uh, in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. He says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Like I said before, we have to get out of the mode of just thinking that this, this religious experience is just based on believing. But in the Hebrews, they always thought about function, purpose, function. Every time that you ask, the, every time someone said, repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand, repent, repent. The next thing, the next response, they said, what shall I then do? They knew it was something that you had to do in order to inherit the kingdom, in order to, to, to repent. Repent means change your way, not just your way of thinking, but change uh, uh, what you are doing. All right. You start with thinking, then your thinking, your actions should then follow. But I can't just sit up in, in my house or sit up in a place and just have knowledge and think that just my knowledge of something is able to save me and I don't produce anything. I don't produce any fruits of anything, but I know what to do. I know how to do. I know even sometimes when to do. But we have to get a proper understanding because there's some things that we really don't know. We just get this surface level teaching of believing in who we call in America, Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins and say this after me. Now you're saved. And there's so much more. Believing is not the only thing that we're supposed to be doing. Believing is the first thing, the initial thing that we're supposed to be doing. First, you have to believe in something or someone for order for you to follow, to do what they've called you to do. All right. So let's keep going. So let's look. What is a kingdom? Like I said, every kingdom has a constitution, which are laws, symbols, codes of ethics, bodies of laws that create keys. And what are these keys? Authority to have access to governmental power. Like I said, when a kingdom, a kingdom has a constitution. Like we live in America, we have a constitution. And these are laws. And with these things, we have certain symbols. We have uh, the Statue of Liberty. We have a symbol of the eagle being our... our our uh, symbol of America, whatever, we have codes of ethics uh, that we're supposed to live by and um, bodies of laws, legislation, judicial, uh, things that, of that nature. And these things are, are supposed to create keys in order for you to operate, to have authority and access to governmental power. So, and it's a little different than the democracy that we live in and the kingdom that we're supposed to be operating in. And that's one thing. Our concepts of government are so much different than the Bible. The Bible operates on kingship, kingdom. We operate on democracy, where the majority of the people rule. So how can you have unity when you have a majority of the people are people 
making up the laws, uh, voting who they want in and who they don't want in. And every four years we get another vote and all this stuff. But in a king, a king, he ruled and you didn't vote him in. You didn't vote him in. And then he owned the land and he owned the citizens and he was the one that made the laws. And you could not oppose those things. What he said was law. All right. And another thing is that he was the one that, that, that I mean, he, he, he ruled everything. Now, if you had a good king, he ruled in righteousness. He made things to benefit the people. Okay. All right. So we don't like having someone over us. See, our concept of having a one person who you cannot come against, you cannot uh, tell them that they're wrong, you can't you can't dismiss what they're saying, you can't uh, revolt. See, to us, we feel like that's, that's bondage, that's a dictatorship, that's tyranny. But no, if in a kingdom, that's produced order. And a good king produced order. He, he shared his authority and he delegated authority. And it went down, on down, even to the men. Every man had a certain delegated authority over their home. So it was the whole culture and the whole community had an understanding of kingship. And it brought a sense of order in the community. And I'll get a little bit little bit into that maybe later on another another broadcast, another video about the order of a man and and, and about, you know, saying Yahuwah, then his son, Yahusha, man, woman, and child. Because it's so important about submission and order and how the whole how we as a community a body of people are supposed to uphold certain standards all right so let's keep going heavenly patterns i talked about how we're supposed to have let me go back how we're supposed to have symbols codes of ethics bodies of laws that create keys authority to have access to governmental power Let's look at this. Exodus 25, 1, 8, and 9, it says, And Yahuwah spake unto Moshe, saying, And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them, according to all that I have shown thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So this was Yahuwah coming to Moshe, and he was explaining to him, I want you to teach the children of Israel to make these things that I've shown you and to make them after the pattern that I've shown you. So if you look through Leviticus and Exodus, they begin to make things and they begin to use things. And, and the Most High begin to give them laws to live by and how to operate. Now, like I said, this is I said this last broadcast, but I'm going to reiterate it again. Our if if if. If the Most High's will was that for us to have laws that we're to live by, our concept of laws have to be wrong in this westernized Christian culture because we are taught that the law is done away with. But if, if you read throughout the word, and I'm giving you these principles. Now, in America, we have the Constitution. Do we say that, okay, we need to do away with the Constitution. If you do away with the Constitution, you don't have any order. You don't have any structure. You don't have any, any rights. You don't have anything. Your foundation. I mean, that's what a lot of people are arguing about. Now, certain things that is going on is saying it's unconstitutional. So there's certain things that's in the word that the Most High gave them certain laws, which what we really need to understand is instructions. They're instructions. Because the word salvation and even the word are uh, not salvation, but the word uh, law or uh, the word Torah in Hebrew means journey. So we our lives through salvation is a journey. And then the most high gives us instructions on how to stay on the right path to reach the destination, which is the kingdom. If you do this, then this, this, this will happen. So it's an expression of his nature and of the culture that he wants us to express throughout this world. All right, so let's keep moving. So 
What are these instructions? Let me read this to you. This is Deuteronomy 4, 5, and 7. It says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahuwah my Elohim commanded me. This is Moshe talking, Moses. That ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. It says, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Let me express this to you. So the Most High was telling Moses to tell these people, look, keep these instructions, keep these patterns, keep these things because they're your wisdom. They're your understanding. OK, and I want you to do these things. I, I had you in this wilderness for 40 years to teach you kingdom principles to teach you governmental principles, to teach you how I want my kingdom to be ran on the earth, okay? Because the promised land, it represents heaven, what we call heaven. It represents heaven. So in order for them to get to heaven, he had to train them on how he wanted heaven to be run. But he couldn't, he had to show them and train them first. So that's why they had to spend 40 years in the wilderness wandering around. And he told them, do this, do that, go over here, go over there, do this like this, do this like that, so that they can get that ingrained in them. So when they reach the promised land, they already know what to do. They already know how to operate. They already know how to act, behave, think, look, everything, every aspect of their lives. All right. Let's keep reading. And it says, and what nation is there so great that hath statues and judgments so righteous as all this law which i set before you this day it says only take heed to thyselves and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life it says but teach them to thy son's sons to thy sons and thy son's sons so what he was telling them is to teach your children's children these instructions because the hebraic culture and the Hebraic understanding is not based upon a people who just decided to make up their own type of belief system on how they want to worship Elohim. This was Elohim coming to a people, choosing a people, and then to express what he wanted to these people. So the Bible and these concepts that are biblical are heavenly divine expressions that the Most High gave to a chosen people so that they can know how to operate and how to enhance and how to create things to happen on the earth, how to make difference because he created everything on this earth and he gave them wisdom, keys, understanding on how to unlock certain doors, how to unlock certain blessings, how to unlock certain miracles, provisions, understandings through his word. And then through that, the nations will be blessed because they will be the ones to teach other nations. This is what Yahuwah wants. This is what the Most High wants. This is what he desires for you to get healing, wholeness, blessings, prosperity, fruitfulness, all of these different things. So it can be benefit your life and then you can flourish and be uh, at peace and at ease. That's all this word is about. This this word, first, first five chapters of Genesis. That's the whole Bible. Everything is just a pattern. Everything else is just a pattern from Genesis 1 through 5. Everything is just a pattern. So once you learn the concepts, once you learn the patterns, you could be able to understand and to express the Most High's nature. Understand the concepts because the Most High, he's not simple, but he is simplistic. All right. I, it kind of reminds me of math, you know. A lot of us, we know how to add and subtract. We learned that in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Then when you get into the other things, such as geometry or trigonometry or calculus and all these things, what makes it complicated is certain formulas that you have to use. But you're using the same basic concepts of subtract 2, add 1, divide by 2. You're using the same basic principle concepts, but you're using it on a more uh, complex scale. 
But if you understand the formula and just follow the instructions of the formula, be able to indicate what formula to use and follow the instruction, then you'll be able to solve the equations. And that's how this word is. Once you understand the, the fundamental principle things, you'll be able to solve the, the, the more complex, what seem to be complex things of life. All right. Because there's a misconception that, you know, this is not biblical. People say God works in mysterious ways. It's not mysterious. It's just unknown to us because we don't understand his language and how he speaks and how he relates certain things. And I say this because just think of this. The hardest books to read is number one is Revelation. And number two, I've, I've recently found out a lot of people don't like to read Leviticus. And that's the heart of the law. And then also Revelation is, is Yahuwah revealing his plan in plain sight. But it's the most misunderstood book because we don't know the symbols. We don't know the codes of ethics. We don't understand the foundation of principal ethical things. So we're just lost. We don't know what these seven lamps mean, what these seven trumpets, these seven seals, what these seven, and all the, the beast, and the gov what is all this about? We, and we just have all this confusion, things of that nature, because we don't understand. We don't have the concepts, right? So this is my, this is my mantle, to give us the breakdowns of biblical concepts from a Hebraic perspective. All right, let's keep going. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the purpose of an ambassador. All right. Purpose of an ambassador, because we're all trying to reach the level to be an ambassador. You don't become an ambassador just by getting saved or just by accepting. Like I say, there are certain things that you have to graduate to. All right. So an ambassador is a high ranking governmental representative stationed in a foreign capital country. The foreign government to which an ambassador is assigned to must first be approved. So like I said uh, last broadcast, has to be approved. So there's some things that you have to uh, graduate to in order to receive certain uh, positions of authority and receive certain rights. All right. So let's keep looking. So what is rank in the kingdom? Let's look at this. If you don't, Believe me, rank in the kingdom. This is what the word says. Galatians 3, 24 through 26. It says, wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into a Hamashiach that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmasters. For ye are all children of Elohim by faith in Yahushua Hamashiach. All right. So like I said, this, I, I hear people talk about this and they use this as expression to come against the law and say, see, the law was here because, you know, it was our schoolmaster. But now since Messiah has came, we don't need the law no more because now we have faith in Yahushua. Oh, they say Jesus Christ because, yeah. So, but they don't understand the concept. What a schoolmaster was, was it was a bond servant or a person that guided the children by the hand from their homes to the school that they was going to. And he taught them the path, the way, and he taught them certain concepts. Now, as they began to learn these certain concepts, it would able it was able to build their faith to understand what the teacher, which is in this scripture, Yahushua, would be saying to them. All right? Because just think about if 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 we don't need to understand the law no more, we don't need those things anymore. We don't understand those things. Okay, just, just, just let's just think about this. We go to school. We start in preschool, go through kindergarten all the way to twelfth grade. There's certain things that we learn. All right. Now, once we graduate, do we then throw away all that stuff we learn because now we got the job, or now we got this desired outcome that we wanted? No. By us learning those things, we can then understand what we're supposed to do on these jobs or in this career or even when we want to further our education. We don't throw it away. Those things help us to get more understanding, to, 
to think more outside of the box, to have more critical uh, thinking skills. All right. And that's the same thing he's saying, because you want you don't you wouldn't know who the Messiah was if it wasn't for the Old Testament. You wouldn't know what who he was. You wouldn't know what a kingdom is. You wouldn't know him. When Yahushua came, he, he even even the um the disciples, even the apostles, when they came to a certain territory, they spoke to the people in the Old Testament, showing these people the the Messiah, the one that we call Yahushua Hamashiach. He is the son of the Elohim. He's the son of the living God. And we're going to show you how he's the son. We're going to show you. This is what he said he would do. This is what was said about him. Okay. This is what he did. So it created an understanding where people can then have faith in and to believe and really understand the spirit of the Messiah. Okay. Because the Bible says that he then sent the Holy Spirit, which I call it the Ruach HaKodesh. It's the Holy Spirit, and then it said, it shall teach you of all things and bring things to your remembrance. But if you don't know nothing, how is it going to bring something to your remembrance if you don't know? That's what we're getting into, because people, I mean, when I think of uh, churchianity, when I think of where we are in America, you know, when we naturally, we go to school 12 years and we go to college. You go to college and you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, things of that nature. And we go through rigorous tests and things of that nature to get an earthly certificate on how to operate in a certain vocation. But in the spiritual matters, what does it take to be a pastor or a minister? All you got to do is get someone else who's a pastor or another church to just ordain you. No test, no nothing. It's just he's a faithful member. He's good. He showed up. He seemed like an okay person. You know what I'm saying? I know it's not, you know, I know we take it a little bit more serious than that, but that's how it seems because if there is no teaching, this is the only this is the only thing besides seminary, but seminary is a man-made uh, uh, uh institution that teaches you how to think of how another man. Uh, thought about the word and it's not it's not through the spirit of the word it's through it's through <laughs> it's through uh catholic concepts because most of us from catholicism most of us from catholicism which was a pro uh, which which um then introduced the protestants and all these different things so a lot of the things that we learn in seminary comes from Greek minded speaking understanding. And it's still far removed from the biblical Hebraic walk and understanding. So that's why we have to get to this. We have to understand this. All right. Let's keep going. Ranking the king. I'm talking about ranking the king. All right. Again, let's look at this. Like I like I was saying, we have to have an understanding and the law, or I'm gonna say instructions, the Torah was to give us understanding of who Yahushua was so that when we met him, then we would know him, we would understand, and we'd be able to further our walk in him, all right? If you don't believe me, let's look at Galatians 4, 1 and 2. This is the next chapter after. It says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord over all. It says, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Again, this is another Hebraic concept, another Hebraic understanding. Like I said, when uh, Yahushua was baptized, the Bible says that the heavens opened up and the, the, the Holy Spirit descended upon Yahushua like, as like unto a dove. And he said, they heard a voice from heaven, which was Yahuwah says, this is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Okay. That was a, a Hebrew idiom, an expression of what they used to do in their cultures. A man would get his child, teach his child the business of the home, how to grow things, how to plant things, how to conduct business, how to do exchange, how to trade and send him. And he would do these things, teach him the word, teach him the, the instructions. 
because all that is in Leviticus. All these these things I'm talking about, how to build, how to plant, what to wear, uh, who to deal with. There's some people you, they weren't so even supposed to be dealing with. What do you do in this case? What you do in this situation? So all these different things was in their laws. All right. So when they so when the father taught his son these things and he would give him these things and he would accomplish these things. So then it came to a certain age that of that of that son, when it became of a certain age, the, the father would take that son and says and, and 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 get the whole community. And he would say, this is my beloved son. I've taught him everything. I've I've examined him. I've seen him walk. I've seen him work. And he 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 can do things just like me. So right now, I've 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 letting everyone know in the community that this day, when he speaks, is as if I'm speaking. And that they would give him a ring. This ring, this symbolizes the crest of this family. Uh, you know, and this is my authority. They would give him a coat. They would give him shoes. He can walk like me. He's a, he has my mantle. He is me. When he speaks, it's as if I'm speaking. Because I love him, he, I am well and pleased in what he has been doing. He 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 holds my essence, my character. He would do things just like I would do it, and I and I trust him. That's what they would do, and that's what the Most High was saying towards his son Yahushua. I've seen his walk, I've seen his life, I've seen him even in his in his private time, and I'm well pleased with him. And that's what we should want to hear at the end of our lives. When it's time to, for judgment, it says, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of Yahuwah. What, what are we doing, though? What's the service that we're doing? Do we know what the service is? Do we know what Yahuwah requires of us to do? Like I said, the enemy has deceived us. We're calling good evil and evil good. See, we think and we talk that that means homosexuality and raping and killing. No, I'm there's some things that we take in as being good and, and, and beneficial for our lives, and it's locking us out of the kingdom. Certain doctrines that we believe in that is not biblical. It's just not. Certain concepts that we believe in, it's locking us out, it's hindering us from reaching. Uh, what we need to reach. All right, let me keep going. All right, let's talk about ranking in the kingdom because do you not know that there's going to be rank? Everybody ain't going to be on the same level. Everybody ain't going to be on the same page. See, we're not used to that. We don't like that. You see what I'm saying? We don't like, oh, no, nah, we, uh-uh, we don't like that there's some people going to be higher than you. You know what I'm saying? In this culture, we think, nah, that's, that's favoritism, that's racism or whatever. But that's how it's going to be, even in the kingdom. Let's see what requires you to have certain ranking and certain authorities and, and certain things. Let's look at it. Matthews 5, 17 through 20 says, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I mean, that's clear as day. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill means to fill it up to its fullness. There's some things that Yahuwah started that he started it. He said, now I'm coming to fulfill to enhance it, to fill it up to its fullness, to give you, to enhance what he has started. All right. It says, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. See, we're still here. So everything has not been fulfilled. Okay. And it says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and said, teach men, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall what? Do, not just teach, not believe, but shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So this is what he was saying. He was saying, look, if you don't understand kingdom principles and you don't try to get these things and walk in these things now, when the kingdom is fully manifested, your place is going to be real low because you have real little understanding. You have real little knowledge and you because you didn't do 
really anything. You didn't experience kingdom living, experience kingdom life. So when the kingdom fully manifests, you're going to be down here. Now to those who do understand, know the mysteries, seeking the kingdom, seeking to understand, diligently looking into it, and, and, ex and, 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 and expressing it, doing it, when the kingdom fully manifests, they're going to know what to do. And I'm a, I'm a next next stream, next broadcast, I'm going to do something called kingdom par parables, parables of the kingdom and show you the parables. I'm, I'm trying to lay a groundwork right here. So when I speak on certain things, you have that understanding of what I'm talking about, be able to see things. I want your eyes to be enlightened, to know the inheritance, to know Yahushua, to know the Messiah, to truly understand who he is. Because he's not something to just believe in. He's someone to know. And you have to understand how he speaks. There's a lot of times in our lives, the Most High has been trying to tell us things. He's been trying to get us to avoid certain things. I guess to walk in certain things. But because we don't understand how he's speaking, we miss out. We don't understand. It's like a child going in the street and you tell them, get out the street. And they, what? I, what? I don't understand. They, they're still walking. They hear what you're saying, but they don't understand. You're trying to tell them not to do something, but they're still walking, and that tragedy hits. See, but when we don't really understand, the Most High has been trying to tell us something, and we walk into walk into certain situations, and then we wonder what's going on. Why did why oh 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 Lord why me? It's because he was trying to express certain things, but he couldn't utter those things because our ears were dull. All right. Let's keep it. Let's keep going. All right. <clears throat> so I want to go back to what is an ambassador. Because that's the ranking that we're trying to come into. That does not happen as soon as you become a believer. You're just a babe. And but we have to understand the concept because let me mention because what has happened is now we get into a denomination or a religion. And then they make up certain laws or they make up certain things to tell us to do. You got to you got to work as an usher and then you got to do this. And then now you got to be here every day and all these different things, which is some some source of disciplines. But I, I want to truly have an understanding of expressing kingdom realities to manifest spiritual, divine, heavenly things on this earth. That's what we're all supposed to be aligning ourselves to not just a church organization a church denomination or a religious experience all right we're all supposed to be expressing the most high in some way shape or form all right let's keep going what is an ambassador the purpose of an ambassador like i said before an ambassador is a high-ranking governmental representative stationed in a foreign capital country and the foreign government to which an ambassador is assigned to must first he must first be approved by that uh, government. All right. Let me keep going. So these are the the roles of an ambassador. These are the natural things. When you talk about an ambassador in natural terms, and then I'm going to express the things uh, in spiritual terms. OK, the first thing that an ambassador is supposed to do is to protect citizens. All right. An ambassador is expected to protect the citizens of their home country and the host country. All right. So, like I said, we live, uh, we're supposed to be operating in the kingdom of Alua. Alua means God. It's the Hebrew kind of it's the Hebrew word for God. Alua or Elohim. All right. So we are supposed to be operating in the kingdom of the most high. But there's also another kingdom which is the kingdom of darkness, all right? So the kingdom of darkness has another set of rules, set of beliefs, different things, and it's trying to oppose the kingdom of light, all right? So it's to produce chaos, uh, hardship, uh, uh, disorganization, disharmony, disunity, everything that's the opposite of the kingdom, okay? Uh, so we are supposed to be able to have the power and authority to protect citizens from the kingdom of darkness. That's what Yahushua was doing. When he came upon the scene, 
He began to preach the kingdom. And then he did what we call miracles. All right. Which is really in reality is just supposed to be a normal way of life. What he was doing was restoring the world and restoring people back to the original order. Because we're supposed to have life, not sickness and death. You see, you see what I'm saying? So when he came on the scene, he began to correct things. He had the power and authority because he had understanding of who he was, understanding of the kingdom, understanding of these things. So he had access to put things back in right alignment. So when he began to speak, the the opposing team, the kingdom of darkness, would pop up and say, I know who you are. You're the son of the of the living Elohim. Are you come to torment us before our time? And he was able to speak to them and come and make them do what he wanted them to do. All right. He was able to look at someone and says, be healed. OK, he was able to 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 speak to the, 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 the wind and says, be still. OK, because he he had acquired throughout his life because he was obedient to the word and had understanding. Understanding is important. Because you're able to do, to walk, and he's able to do these things, and then or and, and 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 set things back in order. That's all he was doing. We call it miracles. Oh, it's a miracle. Well, it really, it really is. It's 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 the norm. Okay. Yeah, it's the norm. So he said, "I do these things so that you may believe." He says, "I do these things so that you may know that the kingdom of Elohim is now come into your midst." I'm casting out these evil spirits that is holding you down. I'm casting out these evil orders that's in the heavenlies that's uh, influencing your way of thinking. All right. That's why prayer is important. That's why fasting is important. To have you see, a lot of people fast just because the Bible says fast and certain things. But when you have a deeper understanding, so 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 when you have a deeper understanding you can you can get more out of it because the most high knows you're doing this from a realm of understanding you're just not doing it uh as a as a as a, a religious religious thing you're just doing it because somebody told you to do it. He, he 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 don't get no he don't get no glory out of that i'm just doing it because this the bible said and we get a a, a very simplistic understanding no the Most High wants you to know why you're doing what you're doing. And then once you walk into it, get that understanding, you begin to acquire spiritual power. Spiritual power. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Protect citizens. Let's go to the next one. The next thing an ambassador is supposed to do is to support and promote prosperity. So naturally, this is what it is. Due to the growth of foreign expansion, there is an increase of opportunity to sell and trade with other nations. Okay? That's the natural thing. Spiritually, we don't necessarily we're not trading with other nations. What we're doing is, let me go back so I can get some get some off that. Okay. We're supposed to the most high said he wanted Adam to uh subdue the earth, and he said, I want you to be fruitful and multiply. So he wanted he wanted Adam. To have children and those children to expand, to span out throughout all the world. Okay. And then, okay, that didn't happen. So then he, he chose Abraham. He said, I want you. I've given you the same mandate. I want you to have children. And I want you to teach your children my word, my laws, my instructions. And as you do that, the whole world will be blessed because these children are going to have the keys of everlasting life through wisdom and understanding as I give them to, to them. And they're going to be able to uh, uh, have the things of heaven. They're going to be portals. They're going to be doors. And they're going to be able to have the things of heaven and begin to administer these things throughout all the earth. They're going to be the ones, as we see in the book of Acts, the, children, the, the disciples, the apostles, they will go out. And they begin to preach. They begin to uh, uh, do miracles. And then it would draw people. And then they will make more disciples. And they will begin to spread on out. And they would begin to teach people about the kingdom. Teaching them kingdom concepts. Teaching them on what to do, how to do. 
and they begin to and they would begin to administer these things. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Another thing. Third thing is what ambassador is supposed to do is to work for peace. One of the cornerstones of a foreign diplomatic mission is to work for peace. This task can grow into a fight against international terrorism, the drug trade, and the international bribery and human trafficking. Ambassadors help stop these acts and helping people across the globe. These activities are important and sensitive and are usually carried out in coordination with the Defense Ministry of the State or the Defense Department in the U.S. and the head of the nation. All right, let me extrapolate some things from, from this. Spiritually, we are supposed to be working for peace. Now, our, our westernized understanding of peace and Hebraic understanding of peace, peace is different. Because sometimes to get peace, sometimes it can be unpeaceful to fight for peace. All right. We think peace means uh, to be docile, to not make any trouble. OK, so that's why sometimes we allow people to do what they want and people be working out of order. And we don't know what to do, because if we say something, then it's going to be uh, it's going to be disruption. It's, it's not going to look good. It's not going to look right. I don't know what to do, but sometimes in order to keep peace, let me, let me, I, I don't have what the definition of peace is. Peace is to, uh, true, the true essence of peace is to have things in order and in alignment, to have a, a, a unity, okay? Have a common unity. That's what peace is. And so if anything comes to disrupt that peace, you're supposed to cut it off. You're supposed to you're supposed to um cut it down. All right, and sometimes it's going to ensue some some uh uh a fight. It's going to have to ensue some things because we have another kingdom that does not want peace to prevail. All right, let me keep going. So this task can grow and fight against international terrorism. Our fight is against the kingdom of Hasatan. Hasatan means what we have the word Satan. But Hebrew is ha satan. Ha means the satan means accuser. That's what the word Satan means. Accuser. Ha satan. So he is the accuser. See, uh, names in Hebrew show someone's function. All right. We're not used to that. Our names are just an indicator of who that person is. We say John, John, that's John. Okay. But. Yohanan, which where John comes from, supposed to mean a gift from a gift from Elohim. Yohanan, a gift from Yahuwah. Okay, so these things are important to understand. All right, so against international terrorism, the drug trades. Okay, let me see. Okay, these activities are important and sensitive, and are usually carried out in coordination with the defense ministry. Okay, so what spiritually? What is our defense ministry? Our defense ministry are the angels. All right. We hold political or we hold spiritual power through our words. OK, we don't spiritually fight. We can't fight spirits because we the most High has put us on this earth. And with our spirit, we, we sit and we're supposed to maintain the peace. But we can call upon angels. We can uh, just with our mouths speak certain things because we have the power and authority to to the, the most High says he'll give us he'll give us charge over his angel. Lest we even dash our foot against the stone. It says whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And that's why prayer is important. See, and that's why you need to know what prayer is. And how to pray. You need to know the will of the Most High. You need to understand the kingdom. If you don't understand the kingdom and you don't understand the will of the Most High, then you're not able to pray the will of the Most High. Okay? Because I'm a, oh man, I just, I, I just got too much. Let me, let me keep going. Let me keep going. All right. That's my last thing. I'm going to stop right there. That's my thing to pray. Like I said, we, I'm telling you, this, this, this kingdom thing, it's, it's, it's a difference. And having information and then revelation. 
I'm I'm trying my best to relate the revelation that the Most High has given me concerning His plan for our lives and to relate the information to you. But it takes the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, then to reveal this information so that you may have the same revelation that I am getting. Like this makes life so much simpler. It gives such meaning and purpose to the Most High's word better than I can I can even express. It's just something that you have to experience. So I'm trying to take my time to go slow and to speak on certain concepts in a, the simplest way that I can. So then when we go and keep on going, you can then use these things. And I pray. I'm telling you, I'm a teacher. And I believe, I'm telling you, if you get a pen and get a piece of paper and write some of these things down and you continue to write these things down as we go forward, something is going to happen to your spiritual walk to where, because it's, it's sequential steps of growth. See, we're not used to that in church. One week we hear about this. The next week we hear about that. And the next week we hear about something. The next, and we never grow. I look at this word like school. We went to kindergarten. We, we, we it, Kindergarten was preparing us for first grade. First grade was preparing us for second grade. And then and on, and everything built upon each other. I didn't learn this in kindergarten. Then in first grade, I learned something totally different. Then did not need that in kindergarten. Then we just going all over the place. And then that's why we still, you can be 15 years, saying that you're a Christian, saying you say, and still don't know, uh, who the 12 disciples' names are. Uh, you don't, still don't know uh, the names of the 12 the twelve sons of Israel. You still don't know <laughs> biblical concepts. You st we still don't know for, don't know who Abraham's son is and then who his son was. And you, we, we don't know any true definition or order, but we're saying we're going to a kingdom. Or we say that we love the Lord all our hearts, minds, souls, but we can't even sit through a teaching for two hours. Don't you know in, in Hebrew culture, they sit for a fourth part of the day just reading. Everybody, the whole nation, or a whole community, sometimes the whole nation, got together and just listened to the word. And you know why they was able to do that? First of all, they didn't have all these distractions. They didn't have all this mess. But secondly, they knew that this was their history. And it, and it, and it gave them a sense of of purpose, a sense of belonging. It excited them to know, look what our grandfather did and look how the Most High showed up, man. Most High came and stopped the sun and we slaughtered them for what? See, this man, and he was the same Elohim as he was that day to, to their day and he, they knew that he was going to be the same Elohim further on because they knew they was in covenant. That's what it was designed for because men's hearts were, are, have the ability to wax cold. They did not keep the commandments. They weren't able to keep the word. And it wasn't the law. The law wasn't the problem. The law, the Bible says the law is perfect, converting to the soul. The law says the law is spiritual. But Paul says we are carnal, sold unto death. That's It's, it's not the word. It's not the law that's keeping us uh, from the most high. It's not the law that's the problem. It's we that's the problem. And that's why we have to get an understanding then to put our hearts in alignment with his will then to do the word. And then it can be able to convert our soul and our thinking and our understanding. All right. Like I said, I'm going to pray out. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We honor you on this day, Father. I pray that your word as it goes forth, Father. I pray that your word may go into everyone now and in the future that may hear this broadcast father i pray that you send forth your angels right now father to visit them father i pray that your word may rest in their home father i pray that your presence may rest in their home so father right now that it may manifest right now uh, that it may be a light that shines in darkness father i pray that you that you may father reveal to them their purpose their role, their calling, their function, their position in you, Father. I pray that you enlighten their eyes right now to get a deeper understanding of who your son is right now, Father. So then that you may reveal to them who they are in you. So we just bless you. So that we may walk in kingdom power, kingdom authority, that we may grow to become sons of Elohim, that we may grow into you, Father. So we just thank you. 
We bless you. We praise you. Said that we can truly manifest the kingdom. Hallelujah. So that we can be the ones that distribute healing in this land. That we don't worry about a, a, a distillery or a distribution center or a hospital or any type of clinic right now, Father. That we are supposed to, that what we call the church, we are supposed to be the clinic. We are supposed to be the hospital. We are the ones that's supposed to provide healing. We're the one that's supposed to provide monetary gain. We are the one that's supposed to, supposed to supply all of these needs in this earth right now, Father. But because we have over-spiritualized this word, because we have over uh, made this a, a book of philosophy, a book of just belief, we're not manifesting. We're not doing the things to actually be uh, what you've called us to be on this earth, Father. So we just pray, Father. Bless us. Bless us to understand. Bless us to know what we're to do and how we're to do so that we may manifest your kingdom right now, Father, so that you may be pleased and satisfied with us. And we forever give you the honor, forever give you the glory, forever give you the praise. In Yahushua's name, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, I pray that you have been blessed by this message. I pray that it may uh, add to your spirit, man. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm going to get into some more deeper things. And I, I'm telling you, this thing is, is, is deep. It's deep. There's some depth into this. And if we get some understanding and, and, and walk on, I pray that I, my prayer is that when I speak these messages, that it keeps you up at night thinking on like, man, wow, what in the world? I do like it keeps me up at night. I want it, I want it to keep you up at night. I want you to be a, a seeker of the kingdom. What is the kingdom? All my life, am I have I entered in my kingdom bound? No, not beyond. I, I don't want to okay, I'm I go to church. I do no 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 no. From the most high perspective, do I have this understanding? Because the Bible says that many of us, we're gonna scarcely make it in. Scarcely. It's just because of Yahuwah's grace. But what he's doing now, he's opening up a door of revelation and knowledge. So the, the things that our great-grandparents or our grandparents, the excuses that they had, we don't have those excuses. The Most High winked at certain things. The Most High allowed certain things because he knew that they didn't have, he, his grace covered certain things. But now there's, there's a season where the Most High is giving us new wine. And you better get a, a, an acquired taste for this new wine. Or you're going to miss out. All right? Okay. Like I said, this is the Great Awakening, Assembly of the Most High. And we're here to awaken y'all's chosen people. All right? You can uh, look for us on YouTube. Just type in TGA Assembly. If you have any email, if you have any, uh, you want to email us, any comments, concerns, you can email me at tga.assembly12 at gmail.com. Also, there is a website. You have to type all of this in because it won't work. You can't do www. You have to type in HTT. I got too many T's in there. But it's HTTPS colon slash slash tgaassembly12.wixsite.com slash await. There you can see more teachings, have more videos, and also, I have certain prayer points on there. Like I say, there's certain things that we have to learn how to enter in. The, the, the Most High, His Word and His Way, it's like court. He, he tells us in His Word how to enter into His courts with praise and enter His, you know what I'm saying, come to His gates with thanksgiving, enter into His courts with praise. We have to understand how to fight the enemy, what we're to do, how to cleanse ourselves through prayer and supplication. And I have a few prayer points concerning that on the website. Like I say, the website is HTTPS, not three T's, but two T's. HTTPS, colon, forward slash, forward slash, TGA assembly, 12.wixsite.com slash awake. All right. Go there. Look at some of the other videos. Or you can go to YouTube, look at some of the videos. And also, there are some prayer points and things of that nature. All right. And also, if you would like to support to your gifts, donations, you can cash out uh, me at TGA Assembly 12. It's all caps. Or you can use the PayPal's. PayPal.me forward slash TGA Assembly. And like I say, I pray 
that this has been a blessing to you. I pray that uh, Most High uh, uses this to enlighten your eyes, enlighten your understanding to some biblical truths. And like I say, until next time, sign off, shalom, and be blessed.